The AC Cobra is a car that has gone down in history as one of the greatest and most iconic open-top sports cars of all time, one that is still celebrated around the world to this very day. But in 1965, with the car market beginning to evolve to have a larger demand for the more spacious and comfortable Grand Tourers, the AC Cobra was beginning to feel out of place in the car market. With the core chassis of the Cobra being nearly 10 years old at this point, and the demand for GT cars quickly rising, the boss of AC knew something had to change to keep the manufacturer competitive, and more importantly, to try and keep it alive over the next few years. This set AC down the path to creating their very own Grand Tourer to compete with the likes of the Jensen Interceptor and the contemporary Italian GT offerings from Ferrari, Lamborghini, and others. Now, while on paper, this seemed like the wisest play for AC to make, to move up market to capture these higher ticket customers. However, AC would quickly realize that the development of this new GT car was actually one of the worst decisions they ever made. This is the story of the forgotten big brother of the AC Cobra, the AC 428. Hello everyone, welcome to Rare Cars. This is the channel where we dive into the past and explore some of the world's most iconic and rare cars. If you want to see more short-form documentaries on cars like the AC 428, the Bricklin SV1, and others, then make sure to hit that subscribe button as we will be dropping new videos every single week. But now, Let's get into the history of the Grand Tourer that's been forgotten by most of the world, the AC 428. AC was operating on a shoestring budget for a car company for really most of its life. Even with the racing success of the Shelby Cobras in the mid-1960s, there was still not a ton of money flowing into AC's pockets to experiment with R&D for radically new cars to add to their lineup. The mid-60s saw the vast growth of the Grand Tourer market worldwide. Now, the GT market was always there, but there was an explosion of companies building their own comfortable, performance-oriented coupes around this time. And more importantly than that, there were buyers lining up around the block to buy them. AC saw this expanding market as their ticket to the top. A rising tide brings all ships with it, and Derek Herlock, who was in charge of AC at the time, believed that AC had to act fast to secure a foothold in this hyper-competitive market. The design of the AC Ace itself was beginning to show its age. So Herlock knew that this new car for AC needed to have a totally new design to stir up some hype around it. Initially, Herlock wanted Bertone to be the coach builder who penned the new design for the AC 428. However, Bertone refused to take on the project due to other work commitments. AC then turned to Italian car designer and coach builder Pietro Frua to spearhead the design of the new AC 428. Frua had previously designed numerous cars for Maserati and a few other automakers. The project was commissioned for Frua to build the new AC 428 prototype in May of 1965. Now, because of AC's relatively small budget, they had to save where they could with the prototyping of the new AC 428. This meant utilizing the same core chassis as the Mark III Cobra as a base. The Mark III chassis was used because it was designed and optimized to house the heavier, big block Ford V8 that would be used in the AC 428. The Mark III Cobra chassis was then cut and extended 6 inches, but not to add any room for rear seats. No, the AC 428 was going to remain a pure two-seater rather than a more typical 2 plus 2 configuration in a GT car. This extra 6 inches was to create room for a convertible top to fold and stow itself inside the car. And while this lack of back seats may have seemed like a bad thing for some buyers, for others, it simply meant improved performance due to the weight savings. The AC 428 was conceptualized as a roadster, but a fastback hardtop version would also be built just a year later. Now, what's really crazy is that Pietro Frua designed the entire prototype of the AC 428 and built it in just the span of five months. The AC 428 was finally unveiled in 1966, and the public response was very positive. The AC 428 was muscular, yet elegant. The car quintessentially had much Italian design language to it, but it also featured just enough toughness in some of its body lines to match its big, brutish American power plant. The initial production cars would feature the potent Ford 427 cubic inch big block that was found in the AC Cobras. This engine was mounted to either a 4-speed manual or a 3-speed automatic transmission. This 427 FE Ford big block made around 400 or so horsepower, and it gave the AC 428 some really good power for its class. 
especially considering that being a two-seater, it was substantially lighter than a lot of its competitors. However, due to the high cost of the 427FE engines and the relative difficulty to source them, after just six cars were built, the 427 Ford was swapped out for a 428 cubic inch big block Ford that made around 345 horsepower. Now this horsepower drop of like 20% almost surely wasn't ideal, but these 428 engines cost way less than the 427s did. And AC, well, they needed all the profits they could get out of these cars just to stay afloat. After all, even with the less powerful 428 engine, these new AC 428s could still do 145 miles an hour outright and clock a 0 to 60 in around 6 seconds flat. In the turns, the AC 428s were comfortable and compliant, while also still being able to hold their own thanks to their four-wheel disc brakes and independent rear suspension that was modified from the successful AC Cobras. And while the seats of the AC 428 were more designed for comfort, they did do a decent job of holding the occupants in place. The car had a nicely appointed interior, it was fast, it was spacious, albeit being only a two-seater, and it handled well. For all intents and purposes, the AC 428 was actually a really good sports grand tourer. All the major publications at the time agreed. So why were there only 81 of these cars ever made then during its seven-year production run? Well, there isn't just one cut and dry reason for that, but it could be boiled down to a combination of three things. Reason number one that the AC 428 failed was steep competition. As mentioned before, this market segment for well-appointed Grand Tourers and luxurious sports cars was a crowded one. Your typical AC 428 buyer could have bought a slew of other cars from more recognized brands in the exact same class. Even with the AC 428 having a major vehicular role in the TV show The Avengers, the marketing for the AC 428 wasn't really there to build up enough hype around it to make it a good seller in its segment compared to its competition. Reason number two, which seems to be a common theme in these videos, was price. In England at launch, the AC 428 as a base model would cost around £4,600 for a Roadster and getting the fastback version would push your base price up to around 4,900 pounds. Just in England alone, you could get an Aston Martin DB6 or a Jensen Interceptor for cheaper, which were better sellers and more proven platforms. And not to mention, prices for the AC428 rose throughout its entire production run, until its final models in 1973 cost over 7,000 pounds in England. If you converted Great British Pounds to dollars, which I tried to do given the historical data available, the AC 428 would have cost an estimated $10,000 in the US to start and would have moved up to around 15,000 US dollars by the end of its production run in 1973. Now, the materials used to build the AC 428 weren't super exotic or anything. So why did these cars cost so much? Well, the cost lied in the production process. See, with every AC 428, the chassis was assembled in England, then shipped all the way over to Italy for Fruit to build and fit the bodywork. Then, the rebodied shell would be sent back across to England over to AC for final assembly of the drivetrain, interior, and everything else. This was obviously a major pain and a severe bottleneck in the production line. And to add to that even further, Fruit's facility was not necessarily the quickest at making vehicles and getting them out the door. On a good month because of their supply chain constraints, AC could build just two AC-428s. And the final straw that broke the camel's back, oddly enough, was Ford themselves. Ford, in 1973, told AC that they would no longer be supplying them with engines anymore directly, and that they would need to buy them through a local agent in the UK at a further markup. Which is a pretty rotten deal if you ask me, considering all the money and publicity Ford got from AC with the Shelby Cobras. 1973 was the last year of the AC 428, and the beginning of a dark period for AC in general, that would ultimately lead to their demise. In total, 81 AC 428s were built, 51 hardtop fastbacks, and 30 convertibles. And today, there are only around 60 of these cars believed to be left. The AC 428 did have a real shot at saving AC as a company, and for all intents and purposes, it could have, but it came up short. Now, however, I am happy to say that just a few weeks ago, AC Cars has revealed their new, modern interpretation of the AC Cobra. So maybe there's a faint glimmer of hope 
that we will see an AC-428 successor built sometime in the future. But we can only hope. And that concludes the story of the AC Cobra's long-lost brother, the AC-428. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash that notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.